So when we're talking about committing to joy, we're really talking about it at so many different levels. So I will go through all of them today, all of the ones that the, the guides are sharing with me and want you to be uh, understanding um, and taking part in on this activation later on and to really um, be able to understand how this, this works. So one of the parts of really uh, committing to joy is about really allowing yourself to be in the moment and be in the joy of this moment. And um, we know that for many of us that it's all about the now moment. And that was also why the first session was about the now moment and uh, being present in the now moment. But as human beings with all programs <laughs> coming from density, we often tend to take a lot of um, all stuff with us for a while before we really get used to these new ways to these higher levels it's like we have these old things really clinging on to our way of thinking and really affecting our ability to just uh, snap out of it and come back into our expanded perspective so we can have a lot of memories about our past and that was also why we went through this activation last time and that the tool that you can use to really rewrite your memories, because they can be a large part of what is um, keeping you from really, really having an easy time allowing yourself to be in the moment. So a lot of the, a lot of the things we take with us into the now moment and try to to figure out in the now moment is things related to the future, of course, and how we can and um, how we can really prepare ourselves in the best way for the future to come. And that is really related to us not trusting the future, not trusting that we can create a future that's going to feel good to us. And um, that really relates to the second way of uh, committing to joy, which is related to not judging, not judging what is and really allowing yourself to enjoy any experience. And I know that that can feel mm, a bit controversial when we are in the lower density where we have really experienced um, suffering as very real, as something coming from the outside causing our suffering. And then suddenly to go from that perspective, or it can feel like suddenly, um, though we will often feel drawn when we are doing that, we are often feel drawn before, because we feel this more expansive, but really the, the expansion into that perspective um, can, can take a while because we keep some of the old ways of seeing ourselves with us. So, um, so I can explain this more in depth. If we, for example, have an experience that is usually seen as uh, not desired, um, it's, it's an experience that you will normally not associate with a joyful experience. It can be, for example, a disease or it can be economical issues, you might get a, um, you might get a, what's it called, parking, parking fine, <laughs> or you might get an extra fine that you, you get, not a fine, you might get an extra um, bill that you didn't have expected that can feel, that can feel very, it can feel very un unexpected, first of all, though you are the creator of it. And also it can feel as if it's really um, coming from, just a moment, I'm just going to feel into this. It's just some people <laughs> shipping around in the chat, so, okay, yeah, so. What we can see then when we have this situation where it could be a disease or you get a, an extra bill or you get a fine for parking in a place you were not supposed to, it can feel unexpected. And also we rarely associate these experiences with something joyful, that that is joyful. But the reason why we're doing this is because we've been taught that this is not a desired experience, that, that this is not an experience that you should really desire or want or feel joyful in. And when we commit to joy, we actually commit um, in a way where we can experience joy in every situation. And I would say that would have been, there would be a time in my life where I would not have resonated with this. 
I would not have really agreed that I could feel joyful in that situation. And I would have judged myself if I was not feeling joyful and thinking that that I was just able to be joyful. So therefore, it's also um, something you or somewhere you can call it like an expanded state of being that you're stepping in to uh, in the pace that feels good to you. Because uh, you cannot use it for anything, this truth, if you're just using it to really judge yourself with like, um, I should really be, be joyful now and I can feel I'm sad and I'm frustrated and I should really be joyful and now I'm miscreating something or I miscreated this. In that situation, it's not really helping us. It's not really helping us to really uh, come back into alignment with who we are. Then what I am guided to see the perspective I'm guided to see, which I also feel that that, my, that resonates with some and for some it won't, it will be something different that feels more right to them. So you can see if it resonates with you that we are creating these experiences to really let the judgment of ourselves go. So we are creating this ex these experience as a learning process, but more of a relearning our own um, superiority that we are learning that, again that we are God, that we are one with God and that we can choose join every moment and we can choose to see our worthiness in every moment. Because if we tap into this expanded feeling of who we are in that situation, it's not going to feel it's not going to feel um, as if we miscreated. It, we're not going to feel the judgment. It's not going to feel as a situation we even have to judge as wrong. It's just going to be an experience, and we can really enjoy it, even though that might be a situation that uh, normally would be seen and looked upon with um, with a lot of judgment, and um, and that can be, as I said, diseases or economical, economical issues and, and really a lot of uh, things to be fired from a job, things like that, that we have normally learned to really judge and find as something unwanted. So how do we bring joy into those situations? That is the really big questions. And uh, my guides have a lot for that and also during the activation we will really move deeply into that so but first i'm going to ask you to really think of start reflecting upon is there somewhere in your life that you're really holding yourself from the joy you could potentially feel by judging yourself feeling that you miscreated or you did something wrong that things are not right yet then um, start to feel into that and there will be a time for sharing that later. And also let me know if there's an area of your life where you really feel that your joy is free flowing and that you can be there without any judgment of anything. So these are really the key questions today. So how are we going to really allow all this joy that we have and all these possibilities of expressing our joy in any moment? And as you might feel, there's really endless possibility. And as you might feel, there is also really a, a lot of power in allowing our joy, um, especially because then we won't we won't be um, we won't react to criticism or to be we won't feel it as being pushed around. We won't feel it as like losing our balance because we can really feel in all those situations that we can be joyful and that is that it's really up to us that no one there's no one else who can really affect how we're feeling except ourselves and um, I want to go a bit back into when it, it doesn't feel good so uh, I had a time in my life where I was really really sad where I had experienced something very traumatic and uh, was my perspective at that time and I was mostly in fear or sadness for like half a year or so and in that time it would have been very very difficult to go from that place into pure joy and bliss if I was going to do it by uh, my own intention there was also a second time in my life where it just happened it was just my higher self just coming in and just allowing this new new way of being but just to come back to this experience so in that experience it would not have helped me to see that you can create 
a, a joyful experience from where I was. So what was important at that time was really to give myself the peace and the nourishment, which I didn't at that point, but <laughs> it would have been, it would have been good to do so. <laughs> so um, that, that was really a, a part of the contraction in my life. So um, nourishment to come back and to slowly allow myself to connect to the gr greater truths about them. Um, in that case, about deaths, and about um, love and trust and uh, creation, it would have helped me to slowly, just slowly get more and more into contact with that and really allow that to slowly become a part of my reality. Um, so what wouldn't have helped me was to know that I was creating it completely at that time, because that would have really rocked my um, foundation. It wouldn't have been a something I would be ready to receive at that point. But then as time went on, and I was really in this awakening process, process later on, it became more and more something I resonated with. So it become, became more and more something I could really take in as my truth. And that is really important when we talk to other people. They don't need to see that what is our truth, what is your truth, it is the same to them. And that's something I come to experience has a lot to do with allowing and committing to joy. It is that you don't have to have them to be on your boat. They don't have to agree that you can be joyful always. They don't have to agree in the way that you see you or in the way that you see the world. And when we really relax that and we really see that, okay, we don't have to make other people see things the same way as we do or be joyful, but we can be joyful and we can just express that and be that. And we can be that in a way that is not invasive to them, but it's just really just holding the space for ourselves and our own joy. And it's just a very peaceful way of being who we are because we know it cannot be changed by them seeing the world differently or seeing death, disease, um, poverty, suffering, all these things by them seeing it in a different way. And I feel that that is very, very important for us to know when we embark on this journey or for us who've been on this for a, quite a while now, but it's really expanding in this because the time is now. So we are really showing a lot of these people reacting to, to these things that I just mentioned in a stronger way. So they feel it more inside of them. And that is the old that is being released in the way of how do we usually react? How did we, how did we used to react when someone was suffering? That was to, to entangle, to go into the suffering with them, to judge it as bad or wrong, to do something about it. And that is in so many cases that we used to do had to do something or change their perspective if, some, if someone's mistreating someone else, in our opinion. Um, and when we're committing to joy, we're really committing to being our, in our own experience and really allowing the joy, no matter what we see outside of us. And that can be tricky, of course, because we're so used to being in these, uh, this old mode of fixing and changing out there, instead of just saying, Okay, I embody the peace, I embody the joy, I embody the acceptance and love that I know is possible for everyone. And now I embody this for me and for them. And then I just, that's just the, the frequency I'm, um, I'm omitting for everyone to see and to feel if they're ready for it. And if they're not, it's okay too. And then I, I at least have a fun experience myself. No, uh, yeah, that's, that is actually how it is. Then I have it, the, fu the fun experience for me and then people can join the party when they're ready to, to do so. Okay. I'm going to go a bit more in about the now moment. So when we start really using this and being this, there can be a while where we really, I'm still there, <laughs> where we really can enjoy and be in the joy and be in the joy and be in the joy. And then 
if I just use two seconds to think about the future or just worry a little, don't I have time for that? Can I do that just a little? Will it do anything? Uh, but what about solving this problem for next week or, and that is really not, <laughs> we don't have to do that. <laughs> and that is really for us to see, let that go too. Let that go too. You don't have to think that you have to solve problems. You're not here to solve problems. You're here to really receive your own creation and trust and not judge whatever comes in. And that can, um, and that can of course be tricky sometimes because we are so used to, uh, to really judging something as right and something as wrong. And also we can be quite used to planning and also see the difference between receiving experiences that just comes in that might be out in the future, but we're just receiving them and going into the fixing and trying to make it happen from a place of not being sure that it will come into our experience. So the difference really lies in being relaxed and lean back. That is what we are when we're really allowing this, embodying this joy. Then we're just leaning back and just being in the moment and just allowing what comes in to come in without taking a lot of action in the say in the way of action to make things happen. We of course still take action to just to just create and enjoy and share and be with others and make more and make make things greater or better. But the, the feeling of having to do a lot to, to really draw these things in into your experience or if you don't do anything, it would just disappear um, between your hands or that, that energy is not no longer active. So that is really a feeling of just being in the moment and just really allowing it to just come to you when, when it's ready. And that is also a part of it because we can feel that if it's not there, we also talked about that on the last call, if it's not there right where we want it or think <laughs> we need it to be now, then, um, then we can really start panicking a bit or going into this, we have to do something and we should solve this and we should do a lot. And, um, and it's really to understand that if it's not there, it's not meant to be there. And I can share ex an experience. I talked about this fun preparation for this call. My, for my own day, uh, we have this system in Denmark where we uh, pay money for this account that's for the holidays. So we can get them, we get them in the, for our holidays. And I had deposited some money, like not a lot, but some money there. And, and just realized the day that it was too late to get them. They had been just, they had been lost. And only we have this from 1st of May and then you can get them the rest of the year. This year it was like 1st of May to 30th of May. And then it was just like, lost and I called them and they were just like no too late <laughs> and I was like mm, okay that's interesting but really just being I knew I was in the preparation for this so I knew it was all about allowing my joy and also knowing that that was my own way of thinking this was how we used to do it this is how you usually get the things you want or the things you planned for <laughs> the things that's supposed to be there and then we're just like, totally turn around, even the things that you think you can trust. I have had experience like this before, where it's like, this is normally a very fixed structure that you put your things into and then you get them back. And they're just, they're just dissolving in that way, in a way to, for some of us, really allow us to trust that we will receive what we're meant to receive and what we need in every moment. And not to really judge these things and really to, commit to joy in those experiences too, because you could see that you could see this as a very unwanted situation, potentially. And you could also, what I felt was really the tricky part to not go into them and me to really see myself as being one with them. And that is what we always, always, always guided to do. When we have this experience where we feel like this person is just, or that is just, or them, they're doing this to me, really just feel like, I am one with that person. I am one with all those people. We are one, we are co-creating this experience and I have called this experience into my life right now to just experience this and be, come back into my power in any possible way. 
And that is also what I talk about when I talk about that, that the way my guides are teaching joy is really, really, the commitment to joy is really in any situation. And it's not just be joyful when you do the things that you normally have felt brought you joy, but really just allow this joy into every part of your life and see this as an exciting experience. And I know it can be a step for some, quite a, quite a leap actually, <laughs> uh, because if, you're, if your whole foundation have been to be very much in the fixed structure or being in a lot of judgment from your childhood and have this as a memory in your body that you should be in a resistance, in, in many situations, then it can be um, it can be tricky to really shift this. But really, when you just allow this different truth into your energy system, into your energy body, then you can really start to relax and feel the truth of that as well. And uh, and you allow uh, which truth you want for you. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this th that is for some they can feel very scary to really go in and say, okay, any, <laughs> any experience is perfect for me. I can be joyful in any experience because we think that if we do that, we will experience a lot of, um, what I use just, the soul will just guide you to drive off a, off a cliff. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. The human chooses and decides which experience, but this soul continually guides you how to see the experience, how to view it from a higher perspective, how to elevate yourself, your perspective, to receive a higher experience later on, because that's what you what you really want. So it's really helping you through these and uh, navigating through these experiences. And I can say that for myself um, over the past years. Some of the most difficult moments for me, I've been able to hear my soul very clearly, and that has helped me a lot. And the excitement that my soul feels in this situation is extreme <laughs> compared to what my human does. So, but it has really helped me to have this voice of the soul being like, oh, this is the most exciting part of this journey. This is so exciting. Oh, this is just the best part. This is so great. And that really shifted in an instant for me to really be able to be connected to that eagerness in exploring life and to that expanse, expansive potential that is. And as I said, it's not gonna be like you're gonna create some experience that you don't want uh, in, in the way that it's just gonna come to you like that. Sometimes you will just see that you will, and I know that that happens already for many of you that you feel that you're more sensitive than usually so you feel like small situation can really elicit a lot of self-judgment so that is often where we what we use small experience to really just elevate above the judgment our, of ourselves. and i will also say that when we just come into this non-judgmental space and this very free-flowing space what it really helps us to in in terms of creating is to not be controlled by the, the fear we have around certain things. So what it helps us to is to create freely in a very expansive way. And instead of having these, um, I can say points in your, in your consciousness where you try to run away from, but, but because you focus on them by wanting to run away, you keep like being pulled back a little into just into that, into that size of creation. I feel it more than, than the words come. It's like when you're trying to avoid a certain object, you can help but focusing on that object. Um, and that is how it works with the, with the creation. But as soon as you realize that the object is not really there, then you can just create freely. Okay. I hope it makes sense. It's a bit advanced, some of it. I know. But um, just please share with us if you have any experience where you feel that you have a difficult time feeling joy in that, you feel a lot of judgment, or if there's areas of your life that you feel it's very easy to embody your joy and you feel this very expansive feeling around it. Then you can just make yourself 
seated com comfortably or lie down, whatever feels best to you. Take a deep breath and focus in on your heart space. And just feel your heart space getting warmer, feeling it deeper, expanding widely. Move your attention, your focus into the navel area. belly button, depending on what you call it, and feel that area. Go into the very physical feeling of it, experience of it, this area. This was the point from where you first received your nourishment and it's a very important point the connection point to earth and to the greater universe and it's still here you have an energetic attachment to all that is or connection it's a better word And when you started receiving in this area, you were receiving freely without holding anything from you. You were just receiving all that came through this point of your body. And this is important that we connect to this feeling again of receiving freely. So a lot of what you talked about today and explained in the sharings is related to not receiving all that you are, not receiving all your energy freely, holding it from you, lack, not enoughness, wrong, not seeing your perfection, all related to not receiving all you are freely you're holding it away from you holding something against you so you cannot receive all that you are through this point but today you're going to expand more and allow this point to flow to be the channel of more free flowing energy and light Move further into your body. Move into this area. As if you were air penetrating the skin, traveling through the bloodstreams, deeper into your body.
You are here to receive you, your own energy, free flowing one. Now imagine that you hold a crystal inside of your body in the height of the navel belly button. Now how this crystal helps your body to receive more, more energy and light in its purest form your purest form, the innocence, joy, and love, and the well-being that you're here to express and be. Imagine how your whole belly area is filled with bright light coming from this crystal, spreading out into the stomach and belly area. Filling up the old intestines. all the organs inside of you with this bright light. Really allowing there to be more and more of you in here. Now feel from the bottom of your feet, more energy starting to come up through your feet. This beautiful green light, emerald green, is flowing up through the bottoms of your feet, through the toes, up through the ankles, lower legs and knees, up through the thighs, into the pelvis to unite with a bright energy and light in the belly. Feel how this brings a new experience of being you, a more joyful experience. Feel how it's expanding the little part of your body and slowly, slowly moving up through your body to the solar plexus area, up through the spine also, and really coming through your body.
you know, how it spreads out in the solar plexus with an orange light. Feel at the same time how energy starts to come up through your fingers. A blue, purple, blue light up through your fingers, and hands, wrists, lower arms, up through the elbows and upper arms, up into the shoulders, where you unite with the orange and bright light and the green light. From the room. All this light brings different vibration in each one of them. And all of the lights are necessary to bring back and awaken the vibrations you want to awaken, to feel the expression of joy in you in the perfect way at this time being. Now move up into your throat and let the purple light be present there. And let it spread further up into your head, up to the crown of your head, out into the ears as well. Feel it in the jaw, Mouth and nose and eyes, forehead and eyebrows. Feel it in every cell in your face and in your head. Now breathe in and just feel how your whole body is now filled with golden light and light in all the colors that we work with today. Feel the different vibration each color brings into your body and feel how this amplifies the feeling of being whole of expressing any emotion that you want to express inside of you. Make it joy, love, peace. Allow it. Now feel how golden light comes from the top of your head and run through the center of your body, through the crown, 
road and through the spine and down the middle between your legs in to the earth below you. Feel it like a cylinder of light. You can expand so it contains your whole body. You can expand it further so it contains the core energy field. See how it's expanded to contain your core energy field. The gold light in your body becomes inseparable. Now move with your focus into the belly area again. Imagine now that you place a different crystal or an object or a being of light. Image that helps you to elevate the vibration even further. It can be an angelic being Unicorn, a crystal, a magical being of love and light, I feel how whatever you place there has a message for you that you receive in your hands as an object or receive as a message through words or images or emotions. Feel now how the vibration inside of you starts to vibrate with the same vibration as the object or the being you placed inside of you. Feel it in your whole body how the vibrations starts to vibrate at the same rate as the angel or unicorn or crystals or whatever you placed inside of it. Mm -hmm.
Now see yourself as a child, three, four, five years old, in a happy moment. See yourself laughing, running around, playing with whatever you like to play with back then. Now feel how you're merging with this child. Your energy feels emerging. So you come to remember that way of playing carefree, to be in joy and laughing and running around and just being in the now moment. So you remember that experience and how it felt to be in that state of being in your entire body. Now imagine you yourself as grown up, the age you are now. You're outside and you're doing something really fun, really joyous. What could that be? What is that that you're doing in this moment where you feel so much joy in your whole body? Allow that experience to be felt in your entire body. See for you what you're experiencing, that you find so much joy in doing and being in.
Now feel more into your body, your physical body. But still feel how you are in that experience. Bring it more, more closely in to the now moment. That feeling you had, that experience, that joyful moment. Feel it as if it is happening now. Feel in the whole body that you're having this experience now. You feel where your feet are placed on the ground, how your legs are positioned. How your arms are positioned. And just make it a very physical experience. Feel your muscles, your bones, the expression on your face, all of it. And feel the joy in the moment that you're experiencing. Now bring it even deeper in to your physical experience now. Feel as if you're moving in the joyful experience. How each body part is moving. How you're breathing, smiling, laughing. How you're relaxed in your body at the same time. Feeling so comfortable, joyful. Again, feel muscles in your back, in your legs, in your arms, shoulders. Feel how you're moving your hands and fingers. And just feel this as a very real experience to you. When you're ready, then imagine that you start walking into a new experience, a new joyful adventure. Imagine how you take one step at a time and move further, further into a new experience. And look around and see what's there all around you. And see where you're at. And see what is bringing you so much joy in your life right now.
and feel how you're being received by everyone around you with the same supportive, joyful energy, whether they're aware of it or not, it is what they're reflecting back to you. You are in joy, you're receiving joyful moments more and more every day. And when you go back and listen to this again, focus even deeper into the physical experience of the joy in your body. When it's felt, it is real for you, your human being. When it's felt in the body, it's easier to come, to become the creator of this exact emotion and experience in your reality, in your everyday life. And remember not to judge yourself if it's sometimes not possible for you to be in the joy, to reach this level of joyful expression. Just be with it. Know that when you allow more energy into your body, you can have reactions to it. You can feel stress, anxiety, but it is just all the emotion released from the body that used to be there to protect you from being the bright light because that did at a point not feel safe for you to express all the part of the game and the joyful adventure you're here to experience. Nothing to regret, nothing to judge, only to love yourself even more knowing that you've chosen this experience out of curiosity. Your adventurous spirit, your joy and love for the human experience. Now slowly, slowly, come back into this room with your fingers and toes, move your hands, feet and the legs a little. Just feel how you're back into this room. And if you fall asleep, it's completely okay. I also fall asleep sometimes when I really listen to my own meditations. And it's not sleep, it's the state that we talked about last time, where the consciousness and the energy field is expanding. Higher self is working with the energy field, making adjustments, allowing more energy into certain paths, and allowing the focus to be shifted into an expanded perspective. So you will often feel that the body will react, often becoming more peaceful, joyful in this case, because it feels the truth of the expansive wisdom, the expansive truth, which, which feels much more comforting to the body, much more relaxing to the body, because there is no lack, no judgment in that experience. So the body is responding very much to your state of consciousness. And when we're shifting between different truths, that's when we can feel stress, we can also feel stress when we're in lower states of consciousness. I also understand that in this time, there's a lot of wobble going on. It's like a lot of structure uh, changed, moved, that are energetic structures, so we cannot necessarily perceive it with our normal senses, or, or most common sense, <laughs> the five senses. But we can, uh, there's a part of us that can perceive it and feel confused or insecure around it. And we can feel that something is changing, but not really locate where it is and what to do about it from our, from our, our state of alertness. 
from our more primitive state of reacting. Not primitive in a negative way, but more like the reptile system that does not know how to respond to these changes except by going into fear, trying to take control. But what would be really invited to is to expand our perspective and then allow the peace in to our body in that way and not go into control. Yeah, that was just to wrap, wrap the, the guided meditation up. Are there any questions after this? Just give you a few minutes. And I will just end the call for today. I mean, what's such a, an amazing, amazing time with you here this evening. Okay, have a beautiful day, all of you, and beautiful night if you're in the same place as I am. Bye.